Hello and thank you very much for tuning in to the podcast series by the New Silk Road Project. I'm your host today, Charles Stevens, the founder of the New Silk Road Project. This series is dedicated to understanding and raising awareness of one of the most important development strategies of the 21st century, China's Belt and Road Initiative. The centerpiece of the New Silk Road Project, an initiative supported by Jeep, CSIS, Magellan Capital, the University of St. Andrews and Dennis Shirah, was to travel the course of the Silk Road Economic Belt from London to Yiwu in eastern China, interviewing the key actors and academics along its course. We will have to apologise in advance for some of the tangential moments in this podcast series and also the variable quality of audio footage. We do hope this series sheds important light into China's growing global presence and the significant changes taking place across Eurasia. Whilst both China and India lay claim to discovering tea first, in Turkey, we drank Turkish tea with Tala Koze, senior researcher at CETA in Istanbul, Turkey. His interests are wide ranging, including Turkish soft power, culture and economic diplomacy, and human activity. Our conversation mirrored these eclectic interests, but what was particularly interesting was how Turkey's energy, diplomacy, and changing trade relations is affecting its soft power. So my name is Talha Köse. Uh, I'm the Chair of Political Science and International Relations Department at Ibn Haldun University. In addition to my academic uh, studies, I also have been involved in uh, think tank for work for the last 10 years, mainly working for SETA Foundation. My main interest is uh, the conflict resolution, so uh, different aspects of uh, you know, peace and conflict studies, you know, ethnic, uh, economic uh, dimensions, as well as uh, peace processes. In addition to that, I've done research about soft power, different components of Turkey's soft power, including cultural power, economic power, as well as human diplomacy. So, you know, I was mainly involved in uh, how uh, economic activities, uh, trade diplomacy uh, affect Turkey's soft power, how it's spread uh, through, uh, you know, around the region surrounding Turkey, as well as, you know, alternative approaches, alternative uh, methodologies to Turkish foreign policy. So uh, one side of my research focuses on foreign policy with different elements, another side focuses on identity issues, uh, conflicts within the uh, Turkey's neighboring regions. Turkey is, of course, experiencing a growing relationship mm -hmm. with both the Middle East, the Caucasus, the Balkans. Mm -hmm. How is this expanding the economic connectivity of Turkey? Yeah. I mean, uh, Turkey for, you know, decades has presented itself as a bridge country. So bridge between East and West, bridge between North and South, bridge between the West and Muslim world and position itself in that way for a long period of time. For the last uh, decade, uh, Turkey's positioning itself changed. So from being bridge to the center country is an important transformation, which means Rather than connecting the people, Turkey tried to create its own uh, region of influence. But this uh, you know, zone of influence is mainly a positive influence. So you know, spreading its cultural influence, uh, spreading its uh, trade diplomacy uh, economy, uh, spreading its capabilities in diplomacy through conflict resolution and different uh, approaches also uh, allowing free space for people uh, from the you know surrounding regions, as well as uh, you know creating uh, more secure uh, ground for uh, refugees from um, you know Syria, Iraq. So this is a kind of new mentality. So uh, you know getting rid of constrained, limited uh, you know nationalistic sentiments in, and transforming these you know the idea the perspective and foreign policy through a more 
region-oriented uh, perspective, not limiting Turkey just to a position of a bridge, but uh, making itself as a uh, you know center country and incorporating Turkey's past experiences uh, during the Ottoman times, during the Seljuk times, because for uh, centuries this Turkey, the location, have become the center for important uh, empires, important states, which incorporated people from different backgrounds, with different religious cultures. So again, regaining that status as center country. And, and you, you mentioned it earlier, the, the, the movement towards regionalism mm -hmm. instead of nationalism. Mm -hmm. The Trans-Anatolian Pipeline is yeah. an example of infrastructure which is facilitating that. Could you discuss the significance of this to Turkey? Yes, I mean, uh, one important issue for Turkey, especially uh, with specific to Turkey, it has some limitations from constraints in terms of energy. But in terms of pipelines and energy routes, Turkey uh, is an important hub. So uh, turning this disadvantage into an advantage. So if Turkey had its own resources, most probably we wouldn't be buying uh, natural gas, oil. But turning this disadvantage into an important advantage. So uh, allowing new pipelines, creating a safe and secure ground, a stable uh, ground, so that uh, you know uh, resources of uh, Russia from Caucasus as well as the Middle East can pass through uh, Europe. So it's an important element, pillar of uh, Turkey's diplomacy and investments in this area is uh, continuing. Uh, continuing. So in the couple of years we have the uh, Turkish uh, stream. Some other projects also, uh, Iraq's uh, you know, oil will be uh, sent to the world through Turkey. So Turkey is becoming an important hub for uh, energy. Uh, so I think this was very important. Uh, Turkey thinks that by uh, building these uh, pipelines, developing these relationship, this will also stabilize Turkey's relations with Russia, Turkey's relations with its uh, Caucasus uh, neighbors, Turkey's relations with Iran and Iraq. So it is at the same time a diplomatic opportunity for Turkey to stabilize its relations in the long term. So it's not just an economic thing, but at the same time a diplomatic thing. And, and talking about the stability of Turkey, there have been problems recently with, mm. with internal stability. Mm -hmm. There's been important developments in the region like the Kars Tbilisi Baku line. Mm -hmm. Do you think Turkey can properly benefit from this, given the doubts or some of the doubts surrounding surrounding the internal stability within the country? I mean, this region has already you know, always uh, problems, so ongoing civil wars and stabilities for the last uh, you know two decades uh, and even before. So this is a sensitive issue. So we have two failed states. So one of them is Iraq, one of them is uh, Syria. We have problems with uh, Cyprus, also have uh, bad relations with Armenia for a long period of time. Uh, but I think, uh, I mean, all, despite all these uh, problems, Turkey tries to stabilize, uh, you know, its uh, you know, security uh, domestically. It's very difficult. Uh, we are experiencing at the same time uh, the migration flows from Afghanistan, Pakistan and some from the, uh, Africa. So those are issues. It is very difficult to stabilize Turkey's security. Uh, that's why, you know, the security becomes you know, a fundamental issue for Turkey in the last couple of years. One main challenge was uh, the internal rift uh, that led Turkey to the uh, July the 15th coup two years ago. So that was a major issue that led uh, security challenges for Turkey. So Turkish uh, military has been uh, hijacked by a group of people. So, but after that, I think Turkey again uh, is regaining its, uh, you know, security apparatus, getting rid of negative elements. At the same time, trying to uh, improve diplomatic ties with central government in Iraq and also trying to stabilize Syria together with Russia and Iran. Also trying to keep some balanced uh, relations with Azerbaijan, Georgia, and some promising developments may also happen in the uh, front of uh, Armenia. So. 
uh, in comparison to the earlier times, we used to have more tensions with Russia, but this uh, energy diplomacy, economic diplomacy, and diplomacy with regard to the Syria has stabilized Turkey's relations with uh, Russia. Also with Iraq, we had some tensions, but together, you know, with the central government, uh, Turkey has stabilized, and I, I'm also hopeful about developing, uh, you know, redeveloping the ties with, uh, you know, regional government uh, in northern Iraq, the Kurdistan regional government. Uh, I think uh, if the regimes stabilize in Iraq and Syria, I think uh, some more positive developments uh, can happen again. And, and if we maintain our attention further eastwards hmm. to to emerging powerhouses such as China, what what opportunities do new actors like these pose or give Turkey? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's very important because for 200 years, Turkey has faced, you know, to, you know, it's turned its face to West. It's a very important. So, uh, try to become part of Western diplomatic system try to become part of the Western economic system, reintegrate it, try to incorporate, you know, the values, try to, you know, get, uh, uh, you know, all the modern technology from the West, which was good. But at the same time, Turkey had faced challenges with its relation with the West, always excluded, especially uh, EU integration was a major project. Turkey struggled a lot, especially until uh, until 2004, that was the major struggle, major project of Turkey. So Turkey didn't, you know, stop, didn't uh, end its uh, EU integration uh, objective. But I think the, the, the gates are closed in uh, the West EU, and now things are changing. So it used to be an island of values, island of uh, free flow of people, free flow of values, cultures, as well as institutions. But today, uh, there is much more conservative Europe, which is not accepting different cultures, different religions, different uh, people like uh, Turkey. So. Uh, although Turkey wants to maintain positive relations uh, in terms of economy, in terms of culture with the EU, I think this, uh, you know, EU double standards to Turkey uh, allow Turkey to look other places. So to develop relations with Russia, with China, with Japan, and with the neighboring regions. So it's a very important opportunity for Turkey. Historically, we didn't develop uh, stronger ties with. China, uh, the main obstacle was the Cold War time. Turkey has been the part of NATO and the West and the Cold War. And after the end of the Cold War, although there were positive economic ties between China and um, you know, Turkey, Turkey never prioritized developing political relations with China as an important element of its policy. But uh, I think this uh, Chinese expansion in terms of its economy and changing its uh, political values, you know, uh, political objectives, and uh, its uh, policy to uh, extend its, uh, you know, diplomatic ties to other regions creates new opportunities for Turkey. So for Turkey, uh, having new investment opportunities in China, uh, you know, gaining new Chinese banks, uh, allowing, you know, investments of the Chinese technology companies are important for Turkey. So for the last couple of years, there is a decline in EU, European investment in Turkey, whereas there is more interest with Chinese and Russian uh, companies. So it's, they are trying to create more jobs in Turkey, as well as the trade volume increases. So historically, we don't have strong political ties. Our diplomacy, diplomacy is not comparable with the US, with the uh, EU. But this is, I think, at the same time, learning experience for Turkey. So we are dealing uh, with a giant, so the giant China. Uh, for the time being, the main uh, opportunity, main issue for Turkey has been uh, economy, but there is possibility to uh, move forward in the political sphere as well. And also deepening of the economy. So just there was just uh, trade between Turkey and China infrastructure investments, financial investments may also be a possibility between Turkey. So under these circumstances, when Turkey was excluded from Europe and had negative relations with uh, US in the last couple of years, China 
stood as a new opportunity for Turkey. So I think this will be considered as not top priority of Turkey, but in, as a part of the policy of diversifying its relations, diplomacy, diversifying its economic diplomacy, it's a good opportunity. And if you're able to briefly mention, you don't think Turkey's long-standing strategy of trying to join the EU will negate from positive relations with mm. China? I think, you know, I don't see any contradiction between those. So if Turkey strengthens its ties with Middle East, Caucasus, China, I think it will make Turkey a stronger candidate with EU. I don't see any contradiction. I don't see this as a mutually exclusive thing. But we don't also, Turkish people also doesn't trust EU anymore. You know, it's, although this may be important in terms of economy, as the political vision uh, Turkish people are disenchanted, you know, from uh, EU process. So, so this China constitutes another uh, alternative, but we don't see these things as mutually exclusive. I mean, we will always try to keep positive economic, cultural relations, political relations with uh, EU. It's up to EU leaders to decide on this because we know that Islamophobic, you know, uh, xenophobic uh, right-wing politicians in uh, EU politics use Turkey uh, as a pretext for their political uh, agenda, and it's I think it's unfair. So, if at some point European leaders want to have more positive relations with Turkey, I think Turkey is still open to that. But we don't see strengthening our ties with China as uh, alternative of that. And you've, in the context of regional ties, I know you've discussed mm. the importance not just of leadership mm. but also of cultural diplomacy. Mm -hmm. Do you think cultural diplomacy can, can function between two regions as disparate as Turkey and China? It's very difficult. I mean, uh, historically, uh, we don't know China very much. You know, there may be some rumors, there may be some... Uh, prejudices, stereotypes, and we really don't know. I mean, only the people who engage in trade have some ties, uh, but our knowledge of China is very limited. So that's a problem. We don't know their culture. We don't know their stories. We don't know, um, you know, how they engage, how they do trade, how they do diplomacy. So that these are some uh, obstacles because we don't also know their language. The number of people who knows the Chinese language is very limited. So in order to strengthen the ties with China, we really need to understand them. I think they have the same problem. They don't know uh, Turkey. They don't know our culture, you know, historically, uh, Turkey's experience. So their encounter is with the uh, Uyghur Turks, and which is not a positive thing because they consider uh, Uyghur Turks as uh, the separatist, uh, the Xinjiang region uh, separatists, but that does not necessarily represent uh, Turkish-Chinese relations. So I think one major challenge with Chinese-Turkish relations is the lack of, you know, cultural literacy, uh, lack of diplomatic uh, experience, uh, and this needs to be complemented in addition to the uh, economic relations as well as diplomatic relations. And, and if I can talk a little, if, if you're happy to discuss that a bit further, the, the, the coexistence of, 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 of pan-Turkism pan and, and nationalism within China, can Turkey build strong relations or stronger relations with China with the problems with the ego people in, in Western China? I mean, pan-Turkism in Turkey has never been a strong, uh, you know, ideology. What is, which has been, uh, you know, accepted as an official ideology. Yes, there may be small pan-Turkist uh, parties, pan-Turkist movements, but it has never dominated, you know, uh, Turkish political culture. So it will always, there will always be some pan-Turkist discourses, pan-Turkist parties, movements. But in terms of its, uh, you know, uh, you know, Turkish politics is realist. I mean. Uh, West was a priority in Turkey, but now, uh, you know, Turkey-centric, you know, uh, developing positive ties, positive diplomatic relations, positive economic ties with all the 
actors is a very important thing. So one major problem for Turkey was when it has positive relations during the Cold War with the West, it excluded uh, the relations with the other regions. So Turkey designed its uh, diplomacy, economic and cultural ties according to the priorities of the NATO, according to the pri pri priorities of West. So now Turkey tries to diversify it re its relationship you know, redevelop its ties with China, redevelop its ties with Russia, and redevelop its ties with uh, Middle East according to its own interests. Uh, I think this is uh, a very important uh, thing. And uh, of course, uh, these are, I mean, there may be some uh, limitations. That's why uh, sticking to one particular region and designing the entire diplomacy, entire diplomatic ties and economic ties according to that region is uh, very counterproductive for Turkey. So trying to keep balance between different actors is major priority of Turkey. And, and, and you discussed the, the alienation of Turkey mm. away from Western cultural mm. values. Are you able to pinpoint exactly what caused it? Was it... Um, Turkey's interaction with NATO? Was it the migrant crisis? Was it the Western approach to, to the civil wars in the region? Was there any particular event that has caused the, this fracture? I think one major trend starting from the 2000s, early 2000s, uh, the emergence and strengthening of the right-wing conservative parties, uh, xenophobic uh, parties that are hostile to Turks, hostile to uh, Muslims is a major thing. So, of course, 9-11 uh, attacks affected this process. So, until 2000s or early 2000s, Europe, in Europe there were more liberal, uh, more free trade, free exchange of goods, people, kind of uh, parties were predominant. So, the traditional parties, uh, mainstream parties are losing ground in Europe and more conservative parties, racist parties are gaining ground, Islamophobic parties. And I think even if those parties may be small, they are also affecting the mainstream parties. So uh, the reason uh, why you know Turkey is excluded is the rise of these parties. And I don't see any positive move in the other direction. So during the liberal times, you know, liberal you know, democratic uh, values were highlighted, uh, free trade, uh, shared liberal values, uh, Turkey was considered as an you know uh, candidate. But right now, uh, some parties uh, exclude uh, other cultures, so they define the Western culture more Christian, more conservative, more exclusionist, uh, which is which doesn't uh, necessarily include Turks as well as other ethnic uh, religious groups in Europe and that's a major obstacle. I think this also disappointed Turkey because despite uh, Turkey's all efforts, all efforts to democratize, uh, strengthen its uh, you know, credentials, uh, you know, we face certain challenges. And, and with the rise of other credi credible actors you also have the potential of joining other systems and, 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 and so and sort of paradigms of the way that you choose to mm -hmm. operate. There, there's been the development of other international institutions like AIIB. How do you think that will affect the position of, of UN and, and Western-based multilateral bodies? I think there is a major crisis in international institutions and multilateral bodies. So that's, yes, UN, EU, all the international institutions and multilateral bodies are uh, you know, getting weakened. So uh, the institutions that were established after the World War II are, and the values, you know, shared uh, objectives are losing ground. And that's a major obstacle. So we don't know what will substitute those institutions. Maybe uh, we will get rid of institutions. People will stop believing in those institutions and the values that constitute those institutions. However, uh, the institutions that would promote, uh, you know, free exchange of goods, promote investment, will serve the interests of uh, multiplicity of bodies. I mean, it's a win-win situation in those institutions. So, uh, if it serves, rather than the shared values, I think the institutions can continue over shared interests. 
So those institutions who that promote uh, shared interest for uh, its uh, you know members uh, may become again uh, an uh, you know a center of interest, uh, and Turkey may join those uh, institutions. However, we don't see any alternative. Uh, set of institutions that are based on certain values. Uh, we don't see, uh, we see the weakening of the value-based institutions and um, new alternatives for the interest-based institutions. So whether interest-based institutions are sustainable is questionable because once the parties do no more benefit from those institutions, they may easily get out of these institutions. So I think the general trend is the weakening of the international institutions, multilateral agreements, and also uh, U.S. involvement in those crises, Trump's perspective, uh, is playing an important role in weakening of these institutions. But there are some potentials, maybe, uh, you know, uh, weaker in terms of shared values, but uh, those kind of institutions may still play an important role, but uh, I think uh, there is an overall skepticism about international institutions, including the UN uh, in Turkey, uh, and Turkish government is also criti very critical of these institutions. And you mentioned that the, import the infrastructure integration and questions about the rise of China aren't at the priority of the Turkish agenda, of the Turkish political agenda. Would you be happy to discuss why this is? I mean, uh, I mean we have certain limitations and we have certain uh, objectives. So in terms of, you know, uh, you know Turkey is an emerging uh, power. It's a, you know, emerging economy. So we need uh, technology, we need the finance resources uh, to create new jobs for uh, our uh, new you know, uh, generations, as well as renew, modernize our um, you know, uh, infrastructure, roads, uh, you know, new technological oriented factories. So we need a lot of uh, you know, technology, we need a lot of you know, uh, financial resources, uh, and also uh, education as well as uh, we need some new markets uh, to uh, sell our products. So I think the you know, Chinese, uh, you know, China and its own uh, projects, so uh, road and belt project, uh, some other projects uh, may have some potential to link Turkey to both West and uh, East, as well as those, uh, you know, projects may contribute some uh, new financial opportunities, new technology opportunities for Turkey. So, um, I mean, of course, this is some kind of looking for future, you know, which options, which global projects may help Turkey. Uh, this may be some uh, option. I mean, we need, especially in uh, energy field, in uh, some uh, technological areas, we need some technology transfer for uh, military technology, we need some, you know, uh, cooperation. Uh, and also, uh, Turkey has its own uh, strengths. Uh, Turkey has its own uh, products. We need new uh, markets. So if those new relationships uh, may provide Turkey uh, some new opportunities and stabilize Turkey uh, financially and also stabilize in terms of uh, security, I think these may be, uh, you know, positive opportunities for Turkey. And also in terms of its location, I think Turkey is an important place. I mean, the factories, uh, Turkey may be an important hub of uh, production, uh, important hub of uh, transportation. So Chinese, Japanese, Korean, or even the European companies may invest their products in Turkey and sell all, all over the world. I think we still, as a, in terms of our location and young population, Turkey has a huge potential. And you touched on the Belt and Road. How do you feel public perceptions and awareness of China have changed as a result of China's rising global presence? Or Turkish perceptions, excuse me. Yeah, I mean, Turkish public is not, you know, 
they are aware of the rising China, but they don't know uh, in depth, in, in detail, uh, uh, how China is rising, uh, the dimensions of their growth, advantages of their growth, weaknesses of their growth, what kind of project, uh, pro, uh, you know, products they produce. So uh, China was known as a company or country that are producing low quality products that are, you know, uh, sold in Turkey, but now they have high-tech investments. They are uh, producing, uh, you know, high-tech uh, things. Uh, Chinese financial institutions, banks are growing very fast. They are investing in Turkey. Uh, Chinese, you know, cultural products, uh, you know, TV shows, and uh, even their investing in the sports. So these are major developments that are not well known, that are not discussed in Turkey. So uh, in Turkey, in the Turkish public, Turkish politicians, diplomats usually talk about our relations with the US, our relations with Europe, and in the last couple of years, our relations with uh, Russia. But this is some kind of limited, you know, uh, you know limited, uh, so we have to learn what's going on in China, how those developments have been uh, achieved. Is this something good or bad? So it never become a, a priority issue, priority discussion deem, priority you know, uh, you know investment deem in uh, Turkey. Uh, one other thing is that China is a huge. I mean, investors in Turkey. Uh, do not consider China as a uh, market to be invested because there is, it's already huge. So uh, Turkish investors usually invest uh, other places, but it's, it may be, uh, I mean, Turkey may attract uh, Chinese investment. So it never came to Turkish agenda as the priority subject, unfortunately. And also for the political matters, we don't really overlap our interests uh, do not necessarily overlap with uh, Chinese interests. So in Syria, in Iraq, in other matters, uh, Chinese refrain from involving controversial diplomatic issues. So that's their policy we respect, but in some other uh, you know, areas, uh, our political position do not overlap with Chinese. That's also some kind of disappointment. And what do you think is the greatest challenge to the Belt and Road Initiative over the next five years? I think, uh, so this is a very ambitious project. It's not just an economic project. I mean, it tries to create a political, economic, cultural hub, uh, aims to spread, uh, you know, Chinese influence uh, in a positive sense. But this may be, you know, considered as challenge, considered as uh, a negative thing by the countries in the region. So Europeans, uh, Americans, maybe Russians in the future may consider spread of Chinese uh, interest, Chinese culture, Chinese economy, Chinese uh, political uh, influence in the region as something negative. So they may try to limit that. There may be geopolitical competition. We already see a competition in Afghanistan, Pakistan, uh, this is a sensitive issue. Uh, maybe Iran in the future may be a zone of debate, and maybe in the future, you know, there may be contradiction uh, between, you know, China and US in Tur uh, around Turkey, and maybe in Africa. So, although uh, China projects this uh, policy, this project as a uh, win-win kind of situation, uh, you know, competitors, other global competitors, other global powers may consider this as uh, against their uh, inter interests. This may lead to uh, a broader uh, competition. Uh, and also, uh, we are not familiar with Chinese diplomacy, Chinese economy. So all the other uh, actors in the Belt and Road uh, projects are smaller in comparison to Chinese. So this may also affect the production manufacturing negatively in those uh, areas. And also culturally people are not aware 
people may have uh, negative stereotypes about the Chinese. Presence of larger number of Chinese people may create some kind, kind of uh, xenophobic uh, perspectives, which may also lead to political tensions. So, yes, this project presents itself positive. Uh, it tries to incorporate different uh, actors, uh, different opportunities, but not every actor uh, may see these opportunities, these uh, developments that are compatible with their long-term interests, and there may be some more uh, conservative uh, responses to spread of Chinese culture, Chinese identity in these places. But I think this is a this is not a one-way interaction. I mean, they may spread their culture, they may gain from our culture. To what extent they are open to incorporate other languages, cultures, religions? To what extent they are open to change themselves according to uh, the regions that they encounter is also at the same time a mystery for us. And if you were going to summarize the Belt and Road Initiative in one word, mm -hmm. what does that word be? For Turkey, it is an important opportunity for us to diversify our uh, diplomatic relations, economic relations, and cultural ties with the Asia. So diversification is, uh, I think, the key term here.